son of a bitch. I, you might not know much about me, uh, but yeah, well, I absolutely hate public speaking. But this could be a shit show, uh, but, so buckle in and we'll get through this. Uh, Cruz and I were about five years apart, and growing up, uh, I asked him to do a lot of things for me. I asked him to get me water, get me food, help me clean my room, uh, basically anything that I found inconvenient that he was capable of doing, I asked him. And this went on for many, many years. Uh, and I always thought, like, how is this going to come back and bite me in the ass? And then he asked me to be his best man, and now I'm here in, giving a speech in front of all of you. <laughs> Cruz and Michaela, can you please stand up? <laughs> Look into each other's eyes, hold hands. Oh, I, I know, I, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't go away. That's, that's really cute. You guys can sit down. <laughs> you may not have noticed, but Cruz is kind of a freak. He's super tall. He's a giant of a man. He's powerful. Uh, very, very big boy. But don't let that size fool you. He's also extremely loving and caring. When he was little, um, we saw a lot of that. He had a love for socks like no one other. I love socks. I wear them every day. They're comfy. I really like new socks. But socks with holes in them, I can't stand. So what I end up doing is I take my socks with, uh, with a hole in it, and I find the hole, and I, I rip it because I'm a man. I am a man. And, and then I throw it away. But Cruz, when he was little, he, he had the hardest time throwing away his, his old socks. And, and we always chalked it up to uh, Cruz you know, being a loving and caring guy, and he is that, but I think, I think it was something else. I think it was a little bit more than that. You see, Cruz is the most loyal person I know. And I think this was built in at a very young age. I think it's in his DNA to be loyal. And so when he looked at those socks, I don't think he looked at them individually, but he looked at them as a pair, and he looked at the relationship as a pair. <laughs> right? And you can't just cut one, you can't break that, that relationship because one of the socks has holes and is no longer useful. And we can, we can take that, that idea of what Cruz had towards those socks and apply it to our, our relationships, and specifically marriage. Because we all will have days where we are broken and not very useful. And the cool thing is, and the great thing about marriage is, we know that our partner will be there for us through those times and get us through them. I'm so glad that you found your partner. I'm so happy for you guys. And I look forward to the future that you guys have. Thanks, guys. Mac, man of honor, if you will. Um, but now we know, all know that Mac 
um, bumped into her soulmate, and we all know that that was me five years ago. <laughs> and I just, like, we can all just say that I prepared this match because they bumped into each other in Fort Lauderdale. Um, I heard all about it, many different versions, different sides. <laughs> but what really stuck out to me was the first text I got from Mac on that trip was. I met the really hot 6'10 guy, he's such a sweetie, we've talked so much, and of course he's a military man. So, she's sticking true to what she knows. You can take that man with an umbrella to that. Oh, for sure. Thank you for over here. Wow. Okay, let's go get some Reese's Cups. Yes. Uh, but now, she also mentioned that he lives in Iowa, so I was like, oh, okay. I know this isn't going to last. This is going to be like a quick fling on this trip. But here we are. It's kind of crazy. But we've been through a lot. And I've loved watching them grow together. Um, and I've seen like this whole relationship unfold. And I know for sure she's going to be. Suck it in. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> now I know Cruz is the man for Mac. Um, I love you both so much. Oh. <laughs> I take after Cruz, apparently. <laughs> Just let it out, buddy. Yeah. Now I've got to keep it together.